Today you're gonna learn how to make this Wojak animation just like the ones you used to see in Hamza's channel. I've been getting quite a few requests to make a tutorial on these, so I'm gonna be breaking it down for you right now step by step. So you can easily recreate it for other YouTubers or maybe your own channel, therefore skyrocketing your views and subscribers. We're gonna be breaking this down into three steps. The first one is sourcing for assets. In terms of getting Wojak pictures, you can just go to wojakparadise.net. You'll see that you have a bunch of different options from here, and most of them already have a transparent background. For the guy in the suit, I just went into the search bar and put in CEO. Once I did that, I got a couple of options, but I just wanna get this one right here. So you just click on it, and then you can click directly on the Wojak itself, and it'll bring you to a separate page, which will give you a high quality version of it, and then you can just download it into your folder. For this one, I typed in Doomer on the search bar. And for this one, I searched up, girl, that was it. I chose this one because it looked like it could fit an Instagram post. Also because I like corn, but you know. And for the background, I just went to Google Images and typed in New York City streets. I decided to go with this one right here. For the phone on the hand, again, I just went to Google Images and looked up person looking at phone and then just picked the best one that I felt fit the scene a lot better. This is the one that I chose. For the people walking across the screen, I did source it from a subscription-based website that I have, which is Envato Elements. So that's the only thing that requires a payment from you if you're looking for that one specific scene that I'm using. And then for the background on the Instagram post, it doesn't really matter because it's gonna be blurred out anyways, but to fit the character being that she has a corn shirt, I just looked up like goth or room or something like that. You know, something random. In order to get the Instagram border, all I did was type in Instagram template, I went to tools, and then I chose color, I made it transparent. And when you do that, it's gonna give you a bunch of options where the background is already taken out. So it's easier to just drag and drop. The one I used is this one right here. So you can see the post section is already eliminated. So you can just throw in whatever asset you want. Awesome, so you have everything you need to start animating. Now we're gonna head to After Effects and create a new composition. I'm gonna do a 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second. Now we're just gonna go ahead and drag everything into After Effects. So let's start simple. Just drag in the New York background and then scale it up to whatever you feel is best. Then we're gonna go ahead and throw in the CEO, scale him up as well. So the first thing we're gonna do now is pre-compose. So right click on the CEO, pre-compose, and then just type in whatever you want. I'm gonna go and move all attributes into the new composition. Press OK. Now we're gonna go ahead and drag in the Doomer next. Right click, pre-compose, Doomer, press OK. Now the reason why I'm pre-composing is because if you want to change your characters in the future so that it's a different one, you can do it easily by just going into the pre-comp and then just swapping out the character. I'm going to go into the comp itself and just scale him up a little bit. I can't see where the border ends, so you can just hit this button right here and it'll make the background an opposite color. Now they're both looking the same way, so we want to go ahead and flip somebody around. We're going to do that with the Doomer. So right click, transform, flip horizontal. And now he's looking the other way. You're going to go ahead and put them in the starting position. So we're going to put the CEO to the left and the Doomer to the right. And they're just going to cross paths. Now in terms of the walking cycle, there's different ways to go about it. The way I'm going to show you is what I find to be the easiest. So go ahead and press on one of your assets, press P, and then you're going to right click on position and separate dimensions. So this is going to allow you to animate them on separate dimensions on the X position and the Y position. Let me show you what that looks like. So let's say we're going to keyframe the X position at the very beginning of the composition. I'm actually going to make this composition a little shorter since it's way too long. I'm going to make it four seconds. You're just going to go ahead and drag this little blue thing. I don't know what to really call it, <laughs> but just hold shift and it'll snap onto the, to this other thing that I don't know what it's called. So yeah, I'm a professional guys. I do this for a living. Anyways, once you've closed in the gap, right click, trim comp to work area. Go ahead and create that first keyframe on the X position and go to the very last keyframe. And then you're going to put him where you want him to end up at. So we're going to go ahead and drag this. And if you want to drag it a little faster, just hold on shift. And so he's going to end up right here, right? So the animation starts here and then he's going to end up to the left and it's going to lag a little bit. And whenever you're working with After Effects, you mainly want to work with a lower quality. That way it doesn't lag as much. So we're going to try third and see how that works out. Yeah, it's pretty good. So he moved from one side to the other, but now we want to make him look like he's walking, right? And this is why we separated the dimensions, because now we're going to animate the Y position. So you're going to place a keyframe at the very first frame. Then you're going to hold Command Shift and then press the right arrow key or Control Shift on Windows, I believe. And then the Y position, you know, affects up and down, right? So this is how we're going to animate the walking sort of animation. So we're going to do from 540 to maybe 550. Let's see how that looks. Right. Uh, maybe a little bit more. It's not very noticeable. So maybe let's do 560. 
540 to 560. Yep, there we go. Then you're gonna hold Command Shift and then right arrow key again. And again, that's gonna go 10 frames forward instead of just one frame. And what we wanna do is we wanna copy the first keyframe. Command C to copy, Command V to paste. And so now it's gonna have this little movement where it's gonna look like he's walking. Now you'll be inclined to just sort of copy and paste everything to the timeline like this, but there's a better way to do it. So once you've created these three keyframes, you're gonna go and press option and then click on the stopwatch. We're gonna write down an expression called loop out, which is right here. Press enter and you're just gonna leave it as is. And then once you play, you're gonna see that it just keeps on repeating as he's walking across, he's still jumping up and down, which gives it that sort of walking simulation, even though he's not really walking. Then it's just a matter of repeating the same step with CEO, right click, separate dimensions, go ahead and do a keyframe at the very beginning, then a keyframe where he's gonna end up. And you can try just copying the keyframes that you set up for Doomer and just, just paste them on CEO and see if they work. And they do, but now they're walking up and down at the very same time. It looks a little weird. So what we're going to do is we're just going to delete the first keyframe. We're going to move these two to the very beginning. So his starting point is now down instead of up like Doomer is. You're going to copy this first keyframe and you're going to paste it right here. Now he's walking in reverse to Doomer. That way it doesn't seem like they're just in sync and it looks weird. One more thing, by the way, choose all the keyframes for the wife decision and press F9. This is gonna smooth them out, right? This is easy ease. That way the movement is a lot smoother. So the animation's looking pretty good so far. Now we're gonna go ahead and throw in the hands with the phone. Go into the Doomer pre-comp and then on our project panel, we're gonna find the asset that we have where the man is holding the phone, right? So this one right here, drag it in. And what we wanna do is we wanna separate the hand from the rest of the picture, right? So go ahead and click. Make sure you're clicking on the asset of the man holding the picture. And we're just gonna go ahead and zoom in a bit. You can hold space to move around the picture and it'll make it a lot easier. Press G to pull up the pen tool. And then we're gonna go ahead and start masking around the hand. If you hold down, you'll see that you create this curve right here, which will make it a lot smoother in certain areas when you're masking. And then it's just a matter of pulling off a few curves like this so that you get a nice clean cut of the hand with the phone. Hey, this is Eric from The Editing Hub. I just thought I'd pop in real quick and say, really appreciate you watching so far, and I hope I'm providing a lot of value on this video, and so- Oh, whoops. See, I kind of cut into the phone here. That happens sometimes. Just press Control-C or Command-C to go back. And then we start again. Wow, that guy was rude. Anyways, I hope you're having a fantastic day, and uh, if you have any other suggestions for any other tutorials, don't be shy and leave a comment. I'm always excited to read them. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Great, so now we have the asset masked out, and now we can throw it into the composition. Now you're starting to see how everything's coming together. So this one, you have the option to either put it by his ear so that it looks like he's talking on it, or you can go ahead and do right click, transform, flip horizontal, and then you can put it like this. So it looks like he's looking at the phone. He's looking at something in the phone. I'm gonna scale it up a little bit so it fits, and then it looks a little too sharp here. So we're gonna go to the hand, press M, M, M three times so that you get these different options. We're gonna bump up the feather a little bit. I'm gonna do it by holding command. So it's not as crazy in your parameters. We just wanna go up in small increments. And now that looks a little bit smoother. If you're seeing a little bit of that blue outline from the original image, just go into mask expansion and then just lower it down a little bit and now it's gone. And now that we have this hand messed out, we can just duplicate it and then put it on the other asset of the CEO. So I'm gonna do that. So click, command C to copy. We're gonna go back to the composition and the CEO and then command V to paste. And then just place it wherever you want. So one thing you're gonna notice is that Doomer is kind of looking off in the distance and not at the phone itself, but we're not really animating the eyes much, so we're just gonna go with this option right here. Double click on the Doomer, press the brush tool or command B, zoom in, and what we wanna do is we wanna get the white color so that we can paint out certain areas right here. So you're gonna hold down Alt or Option, and this is gonna pop up with the eyedropper tool. It's gonna let you select whatever color you want to use. So click on the white, and then we can start sort of taking out certain parts of the eye. And then we're going to pull up the eyedropper tool again. And we're going to fill in this part. And then you're just kind of going to do that until it looks like he's looking down. Kind of like this. Then we're going to do the same with this one. Perfect. So now it looks like he's looking down on his phone instead of off in the distance like this. Now we're gonna work with the Instagram post that pops out of his phone. We're gonna go ahead and drag the girl. Gonna drag the background as well. 
and then we're gonna drag the Instagram template. And you're gonna choose all three of them, and we're gonna pre-compose them together. So pre-compose, uh, just type in whatever you want. I'll just type in girl, double click on the pre-comp, and then we get to work on this separately. We're gonna go ahead and scale her so she fits the frame. And then we're gonna scale the background up, and then you're just gonna have to mask out the different areas. Press G for the pen tool, and start selecting around the square, like this. So now everything fits the frame perfectly and we're good to go. Now she needs a profile picture. So we're going to go the lazy way out. We're just going to duplicate the girl. Make sure you're renaming it so you know what you're looking at. And then I'm going to place her here. Scale her down. You can even zoom in if you want so you can take a look. Uh, kind of like this. And then maybe you can add like a background with a different color. So uh, you can just go to layer, new, solid or control Y, command Y. And then, uh, I don't know, let's make it like a purple or something, right? Press OK, drop it below the girl, and then you can just kind of mask around her by pressing G to pull up the pen tool. And cool, now she has a profile picture. Uh, she's kind of popping out though, so uh, want to do the same, just mask around the circle. And now she has a profile picture. So now we just want to place her behind the phone because she's going to be popping out of the phone since that's what he's looking at, right? So we're going to be placing her behind both the Duber and the CEO. We're going to scale her down, pressing S on the keyboard, and she's going to be popping out of the phone. We're going to be animating that in a little bit. But before we do that, we want to parent her to the Wojak here so that the Instagram composition matches the movement of the Wojak on the right. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and hit this pick whip right here for the parent. And we're going to drag it over to the Doomer. And now what's going to happen is the movement that we animated for the Doomer is now going to be copied over to the Instagram post. Now, in order to animate her coming out of the phone, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. We're going to press Y to switch over to anchor point, And we're going to switch the anchor point to the corner of the Instagram post. This is going to allow you to kind of pivot around it like this. Now what we want to do is set up a keyframe for rotation and we're going to hold down shift and press S and this is going to allow us to pop up with scale and also make a keyframe for it. We're going to move these to the front a little bit and then we're going to go ahead and affect the rotation on this and the scale. We actually want to make a position keyframe as well. So shift P for position. We're going to go to the beginning, press V again to go back to the arrow and then just put it behind the phone. You're gonna see it's gonna animate like that. Now it looks a little janky, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all the keyframes, we're gonna press F9 to easy ease them, and then we're gonna go to the graph editor over here. It looks a little weird, but all you wanna do is basically select this pinpoint right here, and you're gonna wanna drag this over. And this is going to affect the velocity at which it comes out. All right, so it's gonna start off really fast, and then it's gonna slow down near the end, so it's gonna come to like a smooth stop. A little too fast though, so we're gonna go ahead and separate the layers a little bit more. Like this. There you go. It's a little smoother, I guess. Another thing you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and enable motion blur for it. That way, when she's coming out, you see it has this sort of blur effect to it. This will add to the smoothing of the animation. By the way, one more thing. He's kind of moving above the CEO. We don't want that, so we're gonna drag him down below like this. There you go. So now we're gonna add the people walking across the screen. Go ahead and drag that. Put it behind all the character layers, but above the background. And we're going to solo it real quick so we can see what we're looking at. So we wanted to start sort of right here where the action starts happening, right? Hold down Alt and then left bracket, and it'll cut up the layer so it starts from this point right here. Now we can just drag this back to the beginning. Go ahead and unsolo the layer. And make sure you name it, by the way. Hit Enter or Return on your keyboard, and then just put in People. Now we're gonna duplicate it by pressing Command D, and then we're gonna place this one above all the characters. And I'm gonna show you why in a second. But the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and make them all 3D layers. So we're gonna go ahead and select all with Command A, and then press 3D right here. Once this is done, you're gonna wanna create a new camera. So layer, new, camera. 15 millimeter is fine, just press OK. And now you wanna position them across in C space. So uh, what we're gonna do is for example, the background of New York. We're gonna press P and we're gonna drag this up so that it goes back in space. I'm gonna make it, let's do 1200 maybe. Then we're gonna scale it back up so it fits the scene. 
And you're gonna notice that when I zoom in, it's gonna have this parallax effect. By the way, there was an issue with the eyes on Doomer, so we're gonna go back into the composition. We're gonna press E for effects, and you're gonna see this is the one that we used to paint out parts of his eye. Hit the drop down menu, and you're gonna see that it doesn't quite fit the whole composition. So we're gonna select the first one, hold shift, click on the last one, and then we're gonna drag this all the way to the start. Now it's fixed. So we're gonna bring the people back in, but we're gonna go ahead and hide this one on the foreground and then work with the people in the background. So again, we're gonna hit position, we're gonna push them back in C-space. Then we're gonna kind of put them into the scene however we feel like. Uh, we're gonna scale them down a little bit, maybe scale them up a bit like this. And it's gonna add it so there's people walking all over. This guy's way too far up, so we're actually gonna do it like this. I might scale it up a little bit more. Just play around with this until it feels right for you. This is pretty good. Now we're gonna work with the foreground people, and this one we're actually gonna push way to the front. So go ahead and press P again for position, and then push them way to the front. We're gonna do maybe, let's see, I think 1500, minus 1500. That's a good point. So it's gonna look like this. We do wanna offset it a little bit, by the way, so it doesn't just match the background. This'll do good. Then we're gonna go to the camera, I'm gonna press the draw down menu, transform, and we're gonna select both the position of interest and position. We're gonna start a keyframe at the very beginning. Then we're gonna go to the last keyframe or wherever you want the animation to end. I'm gonna press C for the camera, and you're just gonna push forward like this. You can see there's a bit of a weird hiccup here. In order to fix that, we can go ahead and go to the CEO layer, press P for position, and then remember we separated the dimensions on this one, so we're just gonna affect the C position. I'm gonna push it back and that's gonna move him to the front. Perfect. Now you also see that the Instagram post is popping up in front of the phone instead of behind, so we're gonna have to fix that. Go to the girl layer, press P for position, and we're gonna have to do that for both keyframes. So go ahead to the first one and drag this forward so that she gets pushed back in the composition. Then we're gonna go ahead to the second keyframe and we're gonna do the same thing. Drag forward so she gets pushed back. There's a bit of an issue with the animation, and it's that the Instagram post kind of just goes off screen. It doesn't look very good. So that means the Wojaks are actually occupying way too much of the screen. So we want to go ahead and create a new null layer, Command, Option, Shift, Y, or you can just go to Layer, New, Null Object. And you're going to go ahead and select the CEO and the Doomer. And you're going to choose the Pick Whip for both of them. And you're going to drag it to the Null layer. Now what you want to do with the Null is we're going to drag them down a little bit, right? So hold down the Null and then drag down like this. Just kind of adjust to what you feel is right. Maybe like this. Yeah, it's a little bit better. So you've now finished your animation. Now we move on to step three, which is adding effects and compositing the scene. Just want to give a quick disclaimer. I actually took out this layer off of the 3D layer because it was messing up a bit with the composition. All I did was scale it up over here until it fit the scene the way I wanted to. Now let's focus on the Wojax first. Go ahead and click on the CEO layer, right click, Layer Styles, and Inner Shadow. Now we're gonna go to the Inner Shadow properties and we're just gonna play around with this. What I wanna do is basically I wanna increase the distance and then the angle, we're just gonna kinda move it around like this. This is so it adds a lot more dimension to the character instead of it just being a flat image. We're gonna increase the size. Maybe we wanna take the distance off a little bit and the opacity a little bit lower. We don't want it to be too obvious. Then what you can do is you can just copy the inner shadow, so Command-C, and then you can paste it on the Doomer. Now it's just a matter of changing the angle so that it fits better. Kind of like this. Now for the background, you want to add a Gaussian Blur, so it adds more dimension to the parallax effect. Go ahead and look up Gaussian Blur, and then increase it a tad bit until you feel that it looks right. Then maybe something like that. That way the focus is on the characters and not on the background itself. And now we want to pull in the Instagram post. We want to give it a bit of a transparent sort of digital look so that it's not so sharp on the screen. Click on the girl layer. We're going to add a preset that comes with After Effects, which is called Bad TV 3 Week. And immediately it's going to look kind of wonky. You just want to take off the wave warp. And we're also going to take off the noise. We don't need that. But you can already see it adds a bit of transparency to it so that you can kind of see through the Instagram post. It's almost like a digital sort of form, right? You can play around with this a little bit more, but you want to add a toner and then change it to like a bluish if you want to. This is just optional, of course. And maybe blend with the original a little bit. 
you know, you can just play around with it and see what comes up. Maybe we want to lower the opacity a little bit. So press T for opacity. Let me lower it a little bit. Cool, that's pretty good. And now we're going to add the effect for the people. So we're going to bring in the background people. And I don't want there to be a focus on the background people. So we're going to go ahead and add a fill effect. And then we want to change the color. Uh, we want it to be dark, but not completely black, right? So maybe sort of like a grayish color right here. Now we also want to add a Gaussian blur effect and then bump it up slightly because again, the main focus is the Wojak characters, not these people over here, right? And now we're going to bring in the people from the front and then we're going to do the same thing for these people right here. So I'm going to copy the same effects from the people layer. You can just press command A and then command C to copy everything and then go to the people to layer and then command V to paste. Now we do want to bring the Gaussian blur a little bit more because they're on the foreground and they serve as a sort of to really help sell that parallax effect. So I really like this. Then it's just a matter of adjusting whatever you feel needs adjusting. You can also add an adjustment layer. So command option Y and then you can maybe play around with the colors by typing in Lumetri. And then you can just do some basic color correction. I mean, I'm not really good with colors and stuff like that, but I mean, you got you can play around with it over here. See what works best for you and for the scene and then for the kind of mood you're trying to set for the scene. And boom, congrats. You just finished your first Jeffrey animation. If you learned a thing or two, I would greatly appreciate it if you could just drop a subscribe button on this and a like button as well. I got a lot more tutorials coming soon and they're going to be really, really good. If you're interested, I'm also dropping the project file for this animation that you just looked at in the video. All you have to do is join the Discord below. It's going to be in the pinned comments and you're going to be able to download it for free. The only price is your soul. No, I'm just kidding. Just Discord below. You'll be fine. See you there.